back to my channel. I'm Christopher as always. <laughs> I did some remodeling. Uh, if you follow me on Facebook, you might have seen the picture of this, this part of the garden yesterday. So I had the big, big grow box going in the middle here. And it's been taking a lot of space and it's been somewhat ruining the, the, the central part of, of this building. So I thought I'd just remodel. I used to do my films, uh, well, actually I used to do my films right here. This was where I started doing films because I just had a few pots and there was not that much exciting going in the start. But when I, it, it just took off and I had plants all around here in this area. And from the last videos, you seen me been filming underneath the window. Well, that's just over there. So what I did is I just pushed the big, yeah, that was, that was a lot of work. I pushed the big, big grow box with a ton of soil. I moved it all the way over. The, the wheels, uh, they, they're supposed to take, th these are industrial wheels, so they, they're supposed to take a, a lot of weight. But the problem is that they've been staying for a year, so the, the rubber slowly just collapsed. So it was uh, a lot of work just getting it off the, off the, um, off the starting block. But I managed to, to push it all the way over to the other side. And that way, um, yeah, this might be the end of the grow box. It's just, ugh. yeah, well, it's, it's a fun project. Don't get me wrong, I, I just love it. And I think it's nice and I love the way my garden is elevated and it's easy to work with and everything is controlled. But the problem is that once you have so much soil indoors, it's really, really hard to control the moisture in the soil. Uh, when you're grow growing outside, you have good drainage and there's, there's the weather outside to, to really help on that process. But indoors, it's another story. So I've been growing peppers and peppers is kind of, I would say that's the hardest thing to grow in these boxes because peppers are really, really, um, well, they, they don't like to get over water. When I grow cucumbers and I have egg, eggplants and, and other things in there, they just thrive if you, if you throw in more water. But the peppers, they don't like it at all. And th they, they don't mind being wet for a period, but um, that's, that's what happens when you have them in pots. You, you water them good and it will dry out much faster than what it will do in the big box. So th that's, a, that's a huge issue because what happens is I have this much soil in the grow box. This lower half is, is completely moist soil and the peppers doesn't seem to, to drink up everything because it's such a huge box. And what happens is that the top layer, it's almost bone dry. And that's because I can't water more than maybe once a month or something. I don't water that much, but I have to make sure that it's evenly watered. Um, so the moisture just goes down into the bottom layers. And with the peppers, it's, that's not a good thing because the peppers, they have a, a really thick stem right at the base and the, the stem goes a few centimeters down and that's where they, they really get the, um, the, the sturdiness in the soil. That's where they, they get the grip in the soil. And in a pot, that's, that's just fine because once you get about two, three centimeters down, you will have some roots and you will start to feel the moisture. And that will bind the soil and you, you will not have problems with tipping over peppers. But in the big box, there's so much loose and bone dry soil in, at the top level. So they don't like it at all and they start tipping over and I have to stake them. And I don't like staking my peppers inside because it really doesn't look nice. And um, it just feels like you're failing. <laughs> so, well, not that you're failing if you're staking your peppers because some varieties really need staking and it all depends on how you grow them. 
that I like to grow mine short and bushy. That's, that's, I just love them short and bushy. So I, I always trim them down and I, I let them grow and I cut it back and I let them grow and I cut it back. And that's just not a good solution in this big grow box. So we tried. Probably I'm going to phase it out and it's, it's a tremendous, tr well, that's, that's like a Trump uh, saying, I think. I should never use the word tremendous. Okay, so that's just a big, big issue for me. So I'm going to get it out. And the, yeah, as I wanted to say is that I have all those pest problems I've had. And in the big grow box, it's really, really difficult to, to um, control that. It's much simpler in the pots because if you have one really, really problematic plant, you can actually just throw it out and the rest can stay. But in the big grow box, that's, that's not a good solution because if you, yeah, you could rip out the, the plant, but you will still lose a ton of those, uh, those pests in, into the soil and uh, they will just crawl everywhere. So that's another story. And I bought a new camera. <laughs> Hopefully you will see the quality is, is a little bit better than it used to be. I used to, to film on a GoPro and uh, it was okay. It was nice for outside filming, but um, in the end I have no way to control the focal um, points in the film and I had no way to zoom. I had one or two settings for really wide or somewhat narrow. And I, I've been filming everything on the somewhat narrow because I really don't like the, the really wide for this kind of video. It just doesn't look good. So I just bought a new Canon EOS 80D and I'm really satisfied with it so far. And it's nice because on my Facebook page, you should join me on my Facebook page. I'll put a link down below. Uh, I always like to, to post pictures of some things going on. Like for instance, this one. This is um, aloe humilis. It's a um, it's an aloe type plant. It has some really really spiky um, blades, <laughs> and it started to flower. And I did not know at all that this one could flower. It just in a in a, just a couple of days, it just started putting out these enormous shoots, and they flowered at the end. And it uh, it's starting to die back now, but it looked really, really nice a few days. And I wanted to take a good picture of it. So now with my brand new camera, I'm, well, I, <laughs> I cannot guarantee that I will take good pictures, but I will take better pictures than I've done with my, with my phone. So that's, that's a, a huge excitement for me. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to try some, um, some cool stuff with the time-lapse functions and uh, everything. So enough of that. Today is the video where I'm gonna show you a little bit of how I start my seedlings inside. I grow seedlings all the time. And in fact, this is, I, <laughs> I have a labeling system because I started out writing the whole name for the plant, but then I had no archive and I had no, and, and I'm a technical geek, so I like archives. But it was so much work and I had to type the whole thing and I had to type who I got it from and this and that. So I just found a new system where I'm putting it into to my website. I, I made my own system where I um, put in all, all the suppliers or um, everyone that has sent me seeds or where I buy the seeds and stuff like that. I just put it in there and I register the seeds. When I put them in soil, I do a new seed starting and I give it uh, a date and it randomly picks the number. Well, it's, it's not randomly, it's, it's in um, incrementing numbers. So this is number 509. <laughs> and, I, and I just started this system before, well, before last summer. So everything that got outside this summer and everything that I tried that died off in the pest situation and grown back this. So this is number 509. This is number 507. These are plants that I started just, um, it's, uh, they sprouted not that many days ago. I, I think, think these are maybe two weeks old or something. This is 509. I, 
if I remember it. This is a uh, pumpkin habanero. I got it from Kangstar. So I'm really excited about this one. I've seen his videos on it. And this is the Brazilian ghost. And I can't say that I'm looking forward to this because it's supposed to be way hotter than I could ever eat. So, uh, but anyway, these are just started. So I'm not going to be starting peppers today because I have in a separate room with grow lights because of the pest situation. I want to be really, really careful. So I, everything that I'm planning for my big grow, uh, greenhouse outside this summer is, is in another room in another house. And I started around, uh, I think it was about 60 different varieties of peppers. I'm not going to grow them all outside because I don't have the room at all, but I'm going to try to grow maybe 30 of them. And if, if I'm successful with most of them, then I will bring some of them inside here for, for growing inside this summer and maybe next winter. So that's, that's, um, that's the pr production side of it. But today I'm just going to show you uh, a little bit how I'm doing my seed starting because there's, um, there's a couple of ways I, I do it and um, I'm just gonna bring you in a little bit closer. I'm gonna put a table right here and uh, I'll be right back. First of all, I just wanted to show you this one. Isn't it a beauty? Wow, I just love the way this one looks and it's so spiky and thorny. So yeah, well, enough of that. A few techniques I use for, for my seed starting. First of all, I label everything, pre-label pre everything before I start. This is 584 and it's supposed to be passion fruit, which is seed 160. It's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a big system, but it's, since I have over three or 400 types of varieties, in my catalog, then it's just it's just a mess if, if I don't have a system for it. And I never quite know what I have. Uh, and I like to, when I sit in the sofa on a Saturday night, I would like to sit on my pad and just browse through everything that I have and just pick and choose what I'm uh, uh, planning on starting. So it's just a, a simple system for me once I um, reach that level of, uh, of seed numbers. Okay, first of all, I use these red solo cups. They are really cheap and as you can see, they've been used a ton of times. <laughs> They're, uh, they, they never wear out if you're careful with them. Um, what I do is simple. I use this type of soil. Now, this has a little bit of compost in it, but um, that's not necessary at all uh, when you're doing seed starting because the seeds will the, the plants will not use the nutrients in the compost in the starting weeks anyway. So it's just, yeah, you don't need it. And you're going to repot uh, before that time anyway. So what I use mainly is just cocoa coir, cocoa peats made from um, cocos, uh, coconuts. And uh, I use a ton of vermiculite. That's the, the white fluffy part you see in here which is just a volcanic rock that they just heat up to a thousand degrees and it just pops like a popcorn. So that's the main ingredients. Nothing fancy. You could always, of course, buy just a seed starting mix. That's, that's gonna be the easiest thing, but I use a ton of soil in this, this room. So I, I need everything to be standardized. So I use the same mix for everything. Um, if uh, when, when I put all the plants in into different pots, I will use more compost and of course I would start feeding them nutrients. So there's two methods that I use. One is to just use these cups without any holes in the bottom. And I just fill them up, put the seeds in and pretty much that's that. I water it and I put a Ziploc bag over it and I put it on the next step. But um, lately, well, not lately, since last summer, I figured that sometimes I think it's hard to control the amount of water because it's so easy to overwater uh, and I have a tendency to overwater. So it's so simple to overwater if you don't have drainage in the bottom. And that can be a huge problem. And if 
if you're if you're a beginner garden, um, if you're gardening as a beginner, uh, if you're growing cucumbers and uh, yeah, those type of plants that really need a lot of moisture, then I find it's it's not hard at all. But if you're growing peppers like these ones, it it can be a little bit difficult because some varieties really don't like to have their feet wet. So I just <laughs> I just thought of a, a solution for it. Now I seen that that Kang in his last video, <laughs> he he used the exact same method. So that's uh, my patent. Just uh, I'm just gonna throw it out the window <laughs> because he, he was doing it exactly the same way that I did. Now what I'm doing is that I use the two cup method, as it's called. I just take a scissor and I cut the ends on three spots. What that does is it makes some holes in the bottom and it makes it really easy to drain. Now the soil is not, once the soil is uh, moist it's not gonna fall through these cracks anyway so that's really simple. And I use the other cup, I use it without any holes of course and I put some, um, I don't know what's it called, yeah this um, fluffy rocks, I think they're called uh, pebbles. Yes, I think I think that's what he called them. I, I, I'm I'm no idea. In in Norwegian it's called leka, so I I have, <laughs> I have no idea. But he used one. I'm using many because I'm not growing hydroponic at all, so I'm not going to be feeding my nutrient down in this cup because now that's not the way I do it. I'm just doing it simple. I'm just filling it up with soil, the one that I, I pre-cut, like this and like this. And I water it just, just enough and never from below. I just water it from top. And the, the cool thing now is that the, um, the roots will eventually come out of, of the bottom here. And these types of holes are really easy for this, uh, to the, um, the roots to, to grow out of because they're not going to get hurt and you will be able to extract them once you're planning to, to repot. You will be able to extract most of them. And if not, you could always cut through all the way around and just lift out the whole thing. And the roots will, of course, grow into to the, the pebbles, but that's not any problem for me. And I sometimes I just keep the pebbles and I just throw it in the soil because I don't mind having a few pebbles into the soil. So that's the two methods that I would use. I would say this is for more advanced growing, but it's so much faster. So this is what I've been doing with all my peppers this season. And this is the way that I would do it if you're a little bit... Uh, uh, unsure about how how you're uh, gonna be doing the watering and if you just want to be completely safe then this is definitely the method to go it requires two cups and a little bit of pebbles but uh, yeah it's just a simple way to do it so the only thing that I'm gonna be doing this are actually some ground cherry seeds that I saved myself I have no idea if they will germinate but what I'm gonna do is just sprinkle in a ton of these well not a ton but quite a few and I, I just want to see them if, if they sprout. Uh, I'm only going to keep one plant I think if I'm able to sprout this. They're um, going to go outside in, in the garden this summer and um, this was actually an idea from Kang also <laughs> because he was doing, uh, he was just uh, talking about doing some ground cherries and I thought well I love just love ground cherries and I never really thought about growing it, so that's an idea I'm, I'm definitely excited about. So um, I'm going to try to do that. I also have a passion fruit. Now I've been growing a passion fruit here for a long time, almost a year, but I had to cut it all the way back because of the thrips. The thrips just ate the whole thing. And it looks like they ate all the places where the new buds was supposed to, to come out from, from the, the stock. So I'm just gonna try to start it again because uh, I don't see any hope for it now. It's a shame because it was a year old and it was like six meters long. So 
But anyway, I'm gonna start a new one because I want it to grow behind me here. I'm gonna be doing a few tomatoes. I'm not gonna show you everything, but uh, I'm gonna show you in, in um, updates later. So I just wanna tell you what I'm growing. Boxcar Willy, tomato. Ray is the inspiration, of course. The Prax Cherry, which is Ray's own creation. Well, it's not his creation, but uh, it, it's um, his infamous cherry tomato, which is called the Prax Cherry. And I also have my definite, definite favorite tomato, which is a black, black sweet cherry tomato. So it's a black cherry tomato. These are the ones that I'm going to be starting now, and um, we will see in um, upcoming videos how they fare. The last thing that I just wanted to show you is that uh, if you're really serious about starting seeds and you're eager to get your season grow going at a much faster pace than, than normal, then I would strongly suggest that you get a heating mat. This is a heating mat. It takes, I think it's about 20 watts, 25 watts. So it's not consuming electricity almost at all. And it just keeps, it raises the temperature uh, a few degrees, I'm not sure. Uh, it's supposed to take it from 24 degrees to 30 degrees or something uh, Celsius. So it's, uh, and, and it makes a whole, <laughs> it makes the world of difference. Uh, I just place my cups here once I water them. And of course, don't forget to put some Ziploc bags over. I just, you could use whatever uh, type of plastic, but I've found that Ziploc bags is just, they are so easy to, to use because they just clip on and, um, and you're ready to go and you, you don't need to, ca to care um, or worry about them at all until they sprout and you just rip off the Ziploc bags and just put them into to the light. But anyway, these ones will, um, they will speed up your germination uh, a ton of times. Um, I, before I got this mat, I was doing uh, doing everything in, in the room temperature and it could take up to a month, I would say, for my pepper seeds to sprout. But when I switched to this one, I actually now start seeing sprouts from three days. So normally they sprout between three and seven, eight days, I would say. So it makes a world of difference and I think it's really worth uh, worth the money if you're and you, you can look online if you look on eBay and you look everywhere You will be able to get this really really cheap This one is actually a, a Quite expensive one. I got it at a garden center over here This was the, the only one that I carried and it's uh, waterproof of course and uh, it, it's quite big so I could fit about 30 40 different varieties on this mat at one time. So that's a keeper Okay, that's uh, the only thing that I wanted to show and it was actually because I asked on Facebook what people wanted to, to see me do a video about and people were just telling me that seed starting, that's the, the start of the season and uh, we're there now and people are getting their seeds into the ground. Most of the people are actually way, way in front of me right now. But as I said, I, I grow most of my things in another room so I'm also started. But um, for people that are really excited to, to get their um, easy garden going, the, the time is now to start peppers. And I would say tomatoes are, yeah, you could definitely start your tomatoes also now. Cucumbers, uh, I would wait with those. Squash, uh, yeah, wait. You could always do, um, uh, I would say eggplants. That's a nice thing to start now because eggplants, you can grow them up, you can clip them down. Trim it all the way down and they will continue to grow back up so that it's not too early to start those. So get your seeds in, in, in soil right now and um, please, please post pictures on my Facebook page because I would love to see uh, what you're growing and uh, how, they're, uh, how they're growing for you. It's, uh, it's, it's so excited to be, um, to be starting a new season and it's, uh, it's right around the corner now and it's snowing outside and it's freezing, but it's just spring is in the air at the moment and at least in this garden, I have a thousand degrees in here and uh, I'm really excited about what's coming. So this is Christopher saying, may the force be with you and until next time, um, yeah, just, just shoot me any suggestions if there's things you wanna see 
if you want to see a video about my lighting situation here or if you want to see um, something something then just just tell me and i would try to to show you once these are growing in i will show you all the ways that i take care of them um, i will be doing a video on what i'm feeding the plants and of course i'm going to be doing videos on how i trim them I just love peppers. That, that's, that's the main reason I grow peppers. Um, there's a ton of things that I like to grow because of the taste. But I think that peppers is the most exciting for me to grow because they grow really fast and you can do so much with them. There's so many directions you can, you can take your plant, plants and you can also do crosses. I have one cross growing over there and it's, it's putting out pods this size right now. So I'm definitely going to show you once they uh, start uh, getting full size and ripening up. And I'm really excited about the color because I crossed one black with one yellow. So I'm not sure I could get any, any color in the, um, in the rainbow. So um, I'm not sure what I'm going to get. But anyway, that's, that's what I'm going to keep you posted on. And if, uh, as I said, if there is anything you uh, want to see, just um, shoot me a message and I'll be more than happy to try it out. Okay, bye. Yes. That's that. Well, I did a lot of talking this one. Ah, I should edit. I'm starting to get old. <laughs> it hurts in my foot.